We are back with more from Ripken Stadium in Aberdeen, Maryland. I'm your host, Janice McLean Deloach. Uh, we usually talk about small business and entrepreneurship, but every now and then we take the time to talk about issues that are important for everyone. We are at the Experience to Change Conference, which uh, I also have a guest who is here for the same reason. Uh, we all want change and we want to make things better and help people. So I'd like to welcome Pastor, I'm sorry, Bishop Clifford, Clifford Johnson. Yes, nice to you. meet you, sir. All right, let's talk about what brings you here today as a speaker. Well, the thing that brings me here today is I'm also interested in domestic violence, mm -hmm. HIV, uh, and AIDS awareness, and I think that the people of God need to know more about it. And the more we know about it, the better we can stand against it. So I'm here to help uh, make yeah. the public aware of mm -hmm. what needs to be done and what can be done uh, through this awareness. Mm -hmm. And change is absolutely important for everybody. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we need to go further than just change. We need mm -hmm. to transition. Okay, now when you say transition, what kind of things do you think are needed in transition? Because isn't change and transition the same thing? Or no? no? I think uh, we can change and walk right out of this room to another room. We've okay. changed. Okay. But we've got to change to the place that we transition in the change. Our minds need to change. Our emotions need to change. Our will needs to change. We need to change emotionally, psychologically, and socially then we transition in the change. Mm -hmm. So say all these things happen, what is the outcome you're looking for? What, what do you hope for people? What's the goal that we're trying to get to with the changes? I think that the goal that we're looking mm -hmm. forward to is the more educated we are, the more of us now can help those who are involved in these kinds of things mm -hmm. can be taken out of that. Because even in the church community, we find people in church who are in a lot of pain, who are in a lot mm -hmm. of trouble, but hide their pain mm -hmm. and their trouble in their uh, church activities. Mm -hmm. So if we can really get people to understand the importance of change and transition, then mm -hmm. we can have more people working together to bring about change in the larger community. Now, you bring up a really good point. There are, and as we know, many Christians who go to church every Sunday. Um, part of the problem right now and why we're here today is because there's one person, then there's another person. So if they're hiding, how do you get these people to address those issues? I mean, how do we get to that? Well, one of the things I think that we're working on at uh, where I'm, I pastor, Mount Pleasant Church and Ministries, is to try to make the atmosphere comfortable enough mm -hmm. so that they are willing to open up. I believe mm -hmm. that uh, uh, relational discipleship is of great importance. When you develop a relationship with a person, then they give you more opportunity and they trust you enough to open up themselves to you. Now, you know, not to interrupt you, but I also want to ask, the church has made everything okay. I mean, it's okay to be gay. It's okay to, you know, do drugs. And, and granted, people do fall off the wagon, but I don't know, I think, this is my personal opinion. I think one of the reasons that we have the problems that we're having is because everybody's making everything okay. And yes, people make mistakes. And we do fall off the wagon. But should it be a constant toleration? And I hear the church preach about it, but it's very few instances that I can name where I really see people physically getting out and, you know, doing the needles and, you know, doing the testing and getting the It's almost like you don't want to put it in the church. But they talk about it in the church. So I, is that to, I really want to help you, but I really don't. Does that make? Well, yeah. I, I understand what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the, the real issue is, is that uh, more of us mm -hmm. have to recognize and sad to say, as you said, the church uh, in many instances mm -hmm. tolerates everything. Well, there is a biblical standard that has not changed. And what we need to do is go back to the biblical standard. Mm -hmm. And if we can go back to the biblical standard and stand on that, then we will not be tolerating any and everything. But because I'm not uh, for a thing doesn't mean I don't love you. Yes. We love you 
That's all. Good. That's a good point. But mm -hmm. while we love you all, all of you have different needs. And we do. And because yeah. you have different mm -hmm. needs doesn't mean that I'm not loving you because I'm addressing your problem. Mm -hmm. And I think the church needs to recognize mm -hmm. the importance of standing up. This sleeping giant mm -hmm. needs to be awakened to the needs that's taking place in our churches, in mm -hmm. our environment. And when we can stand on the principle, stand there, mm -hmm. because we need some Elijahs, some Daniels, some, some Shadrachs, some Meshachs, and Abednegoes mm -hmm. who will stand up in this time when there's so much suspicion, so much tension, mm -hmm. so much quick, quick, quick. We've got, we are emotionally addicted to any and everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the, the church is looking the other way because they yeah. don't want their numbers to go down with the people in the pew yeah. or the offering and the plate. But if God gives the vision, he will give the provision for the vision. All we need to do is keep the standard high.